Ah. Oh my god. The stupid, it burns. The stupid burns so much. It burns. Um, let's really learn something. Let's uh, see. It is the case that you're entitled to your own set of opinions. It's also the case that you are not entitled to your own set of facts. Simplicity is divinity. Let's make things really simple. Um, sometimes it's actually good to uh, study the process of error and where people uh, get things from. Um, I made two videos uh, yesterday talking about the fact, irreducible, undeniable fact, that full frame sensors do not gather more light and therefore they have better exposure due to the fact that they're larger sensors. It doesn't work that way. A sensor is not an averaging machine. A sensor does not process something saying, well, I'm a larger sensor and therefore I'm getting better exposure. It doesn't work that way. I think I've actually found where uh, some of this uh, uh, disinformation is coming from, and it's not disinformation, it's uh, simply the fact that they don't point it out. This is from Cambridge in Color. Well, that website uh, is uh, fairly technical. It's actually rather simple, and uh, it's got a few errors on it, but this particular page where it shows a bucket and water, it refers to exposure, but I think that uh, certain YouTubers and other people might have been looking at this and drawing the wrong conclusion because it didn't specify. It simply states about correct exposure like a bucket of water, the bucket's width, the duration, and the time you leave it in the rain, and the quantity of rain you collect, blah blah blah, exposure. The key is that there are many different combinations, width, time, and quantity to achieve this. You see, it's, it's not talking about a sensor. I think uh, another YouTuber, or people in general, might have been referring to this, and uh, thinking incorrectly that it's talking about sensor sensor being a bucket. And as I've proven irrefutably, a sensor is not a bucket. You cannot make that analogy. What I think someone has done, has done peoples, is they've taken this uh, somewhat famous website and think, well, that's regarding the sensor. You know, bigger sensor? No. It's regarding photo sites. Photo sites. It nowhere mentions either sensor or photo sites, and so that is the missing information in this website, because it is the case that size, time, and intensity, the size of the photo site, the amount of time it is exposed for, shutter speed, and the intensity, the luminal intensity, is about the photo sites, not about the damn sensor. Not about the damn sensor. A sensor is not an averaging machine. It doesn't work that way, baby. Um, so let's point out some stuff and let's correct some errors here. And, uh, you know, let's be seekers of truth. Let's not say, well, you know, so-and-so said, and, you know, and you're a schmuck because you said, and, you know, he said this, and screw that stuff. How about you, for about ten minutes, become a truth seeker? It's like, well, you know, I don't like the guy, but he's right. He's got his facts right. Yeah, I do. Okay, right now I've got a sensor underneath this. And let me drop some light through the lens. As I've stated before, ages ago, you know, no lens knows or gives a damn what size the sensor is underneath it. It just craps out the same light. It is also the case, and this is irreducible and irrefutable, that if you stick a smaller sensor underneath the same lens, it is using the better part of that light. Well, then you encounter other issues. So that's an advantage, but there are, of course, uh, disadvantages. Um, this sensor, uh, this is actually from a compact camera. Let's just say this is a full-frame sensor, and uh, I uh, take a, a sensor that is a wee bit smaller than that one. It's hard to get it properly illuminated here. Take a sensor that's just a wee bit smaller than that. Do you think that that sensor is going to register anything different by being smaller? Well, it's going to take a sample of the brighter uh, section of light at the center of the uh, light projected from the rear element of the lens, but no sensor gathers more light. As I've stated, there is higher intensity at the center of that uh, projection of illumination from the rear element, but sensors don't average light. You're talking about millions of points of light here. So let's get that analogy out of the way. Take a look at this chart over here while I'm uh, reading some of the errors um, that have been stated by other people in comments and other places because it's good to look at errors. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. You see something that's stupid or wrong, and then you examine it. It's like, well, does that pass the sniff test of truth? Is that logical? Is it accurate? I said you're not entitled to your own set of facts. Not. 
But it's good to look at error. I actually like looking at error because I'm always testing everything. And it's, it's not like, well, is that my opinion is wrong? It's like, no, it is factually incorrect. Here's a statement that was said by someone else that wanted to, uh, um, you know, argue with me about uh, the sensor. It says that he said the total light gathered is the only important factor in determining image quality. Well, there's a lot of stupidity and uh, ignorance out there, and that's someone's belief. But is it true? Well, of course it's not. Total light gathered is the only important factor in determining image quality. Absolutely not correct. Not only is that not true, it's not true on both ends. No sensor averages light. No sensor averages out light. It's like, well, as a larger sensor, it gets more light. Total light? Total light of what? Total light of the size of the sensor or the total light of the size of the photo site? If you want to say the total light, time over exposure, right? T over E, time over exposure. You want to talk about the total light at a photo site, Millions of little photo sites, that's one thing. If you want to talk about total light, larger sensor versus smaller sensor, that is where you're just bat crap insane. You're just flat out, balls out, you know, uh, wheels off the wagon, uh, padded room, and straight jacket, insane, flat out wrong. Doesn't work that way. No light on the edge of a larger sensor influences the signal gain or exposure anywhere else in the rest of the sensor. If I make this sensor instantly larger, and therefore it's gathering more total light, that has nothing to do with the exposures on the uh, smaller size sensor. Sensor size has nothing to do with uh, its gain of T over E, time over exposure. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. Sensor size and intensity is about the photosites, not about the damn sensor. Time and intensity. T over E, time and exposure and intensity depending on uh, how much light is actually translated, uh, transmitted, luminal density. Um, total light is nothing that has anything to do with any sensor of any size, nor has any camera manufacturer, nor has any genuine expert of DSLR technology ever said any such uh, hogwash. It's total bullocks. It's nonsense, hogwash, and uh, uh, unicorn farts. Pixie dust. Fantasies, beliefs, religion, nonsense, just this outright hogwash. It's like a religion because nobody ever looks at their sensor. It's like this religious thing like God. You know, no one's ever seen it. I mean, literally, I mean, whoever looks at their sensors or studies sensors, it's, this is an art form for God's sakes. I mean, how much math do you want to get into? Obviously, it's about creating awesome images. I mean, if someone said, well, there's little tiny pixies underneath your shutter and that's what creates the image, people don't give a damn as long as they can create good images, right? Well, photography is half science and half art. I mean, technically, once you learn the science, then the science just falls off, you know, like a turd you leave behind, right? It's about making good images. At least I hope to God that's what you think is important. Some people just sit there, and they sniff their gear. I mean, I know people think I'm a gear sniffer. Like, oh, you know, oh, you know, but, you know. No, 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 it's about making good images. At least I hope to God that's your premise. So total light gathered, as far as a larger sensor or a smaller sensor, has nothing to do with any, uh, you know, anything anybody said from any camera manufacturer, any expert on camera technology. Image quality, specifically as regards noise and gain, has to do with lens design, ability to correct, uh, to correctly focus, lens design to uh, transmit near and far end spectrum light correctly, pixel pitch and photo size. Not the size of the sensor, but the size of the pixel. But we're going to get into that in a second. Study this chart while I'm flapping my stupid lips. SNR firmware, incredibly important. 80 converter technology. We're reaching uh, the case in the future where we're going to have like 32-bit 80 converters and then we won't even need ISO anymore. We'll have ISO, we'll have three buttons for ISO. Low, low medium, and high. There won't be an ISO 100, 200, you know, all that crap will disappear in the future. Period. Undeniable, irrefutable, other people agree on this, it will disappear. It'll just be like a low ISO, a medium ISO, and a high ISO. And then, pff, photography becomes a little bit easier. It's pretty easy now if you know how the hell your camera works. Um, so image quality has never had anything to do with a larger sensor. Ever. Period. Irrefutable, undeniable, unquestionable. Um... Another statement that was made, uh, tell us why pixel level light intensity makes a difference uh, in the final product. That matters in any pixel pitch. Luminal density uh, is uh, equal to exposure. Okay, Pixel level light intensity 
talk about larger photo sites versus smaller photo sites. But a lot of that has been nulled out. I'm going to show you here in a second due to uh, SNR firmware and AD converters. I'm going to show you the transition between uh, uh, DSLR technology currently and what it was just a few years ago. Things have vastly... All of this stuff is taken directly from radio astronomy. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, purely electromagnetic uh, coaxial uh, 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 circuits that uh, are from light emissions. So this, you know, doesn't matter whether it's radio waves or light, it's all the same crap when it comes to SNR. Gain! You know what gain is? Most people don't know what the hell gain is. I mean, look up signal gain. For God's sakes, please study what the hell signal gain is. Most photographers have no idea. They're clues. Which is fine. It's okay not to know. But it's another thing to embrace stupidity. Let's take a look at this chart. We've got pixel pitch. Here, let's take a look at FX versus DX right here. I have a, uh, let me get over to the side. Over here, I have a, a compact camera, okay? The average today is 1.7 micrometer pixel pitch on a compact camera. And uh, what it was probably in a DX was 5.7 micrometer pixel pitch. Now the average, uh, actually not the average, but uh, the current uh, is uh, 3.9. Uh, it actually can go up to, it used to be back in the day, you know, what was it, uh, 6 point. Uh, it went up to nearly a 6 micrometers on pixel pitch. You can actually uh, bring up charts online that will actually show you the photosite density, the pixel pitch of basically every modern DSLR. Okay? Every one of them. Now I have to scroll back to uh, pixel pitch. There we go. Yeah, what used to be an APS-C used to be 5.7 micrometers uh, about seven years ago or so, and on full frame it used to be 8.4 micrometers. Now the average is uh, rounding out, if you don't take the larger D4S into account, which is 7.3, the average now is about 6 or so. The D810 is 4.8 micrometers. On the D750 is 5.9 micrometers. And you see these, these have larger photo sites. You see, the reason the ISO performance, maximum ISO performance, is equatable to pixel pitch, or the size of the photo sites. You see here these larger little photo sites on the FX sensor? That's right, that means it has a better max ISO performance at, say, 3200, instead of a DX at, say, 1600. All things being equal, which, of course, they never are. There is variance especially when it comes to SNR firmware and the 80 converter on your sensor, is incredibly tight in the compact. That's why the max ISO there is basically 200 to 400. It used to be 200 max ISO. Now it's 400. This is why this stinking little, I mean, what do you think, why do you think that even in halfway decent light you get such grainy damn images from an iPad? I mean, do you, do you know the answer to that? Well, I mean, you should. Gain. Talk about photo site size here, okay? Understand that a larger sensor doesn't produce better images because it's a larger sensor. It produces better images because it has larger photo sites. This is also important when it comes to micro contrast uh, and other things. Um, so yeah, the D7100 is 3.9 micrometers. Much, much smaller photo. This is why bird shooters use the DX crop sensor camera. You see, if the little birdie's right here on the DX camera and you got the same lens on a full frame camera, there is not as much translational data on the little birdie here on the sensor is here. You take the same lens on this camera, say it's a D7100, and then you slap it on a, a D750. You got a pixel pitch here of 3.9 micrometers on the D7100 and a pixel pitch of 5.9 micrometers on the D750. The little birdie is being crapped out of the rear element of that lens the exact same way on the FX as it does the DX. It has, no lens has any idea what the hell the sensor size is underneath it. This is why bird shooters use DX sensors. Ah! Get it? There's more information per square millimeter of the sensor there. This has to do with translational data per square millimeter on the sensor. However, the gain is not as good, but it is a whole, whole hell of a lot better than it was years ago. Not too many years ago, because the average back then was 5.7 micrometers on the DX, and the average back then on the, the FX was 8.4 micrometers, and now the average... Unless you take the D4S, for example. The D4S is a 7.3 micrometers uh, pixel pitch. But the D4S is designed as a photojournalistic tool, which you don't need, uh, you know, really tight pixel pitch for a photojournalistic tool. What you really, really, really want, obviously, 
is incredible performance in damn crappy light. Damn crappy light performance, that is why it is 7.3 micrometer pixel pitch on this photojournalistic tool, the D4S. That's why some of these idiots are complaining, well, why is the megapixel count so low on that expensive Nikon D5 that's coming out? Because the Nikon D5 is a tool for photojournalists, you idiot. That's who it is designed for. It's designed to have incredible performance in low light. Now, it is the case in SNR firmware, since uh, noise has certain frequencies that you're able to dial out, you're able to dial it out with uh, noise reduction plug-in software for Photoshop like Topaz, but there is also noise reduction software in every modern current DSLR. That's the SNR firmware. So the notion uh, that other people put forward that, well, a larger sensor has better ISO performance, you know, there's no to more total volume. It's not about total volume. The reason the FX performs better at higher ISO and has better dynamic range is because of all these damn little buckets, millions of buckets. It's not about a damn bigger bucket versus a smaller bucket, okay? This is where people are coming up with, I'm pretty sure that this is the source, but it doesn't talk about the sensor or the photo sites. That's the error of this site. The site doesn't make an error, but it makes an error by omission. I think people are actually reading this site and this uh, image right here on the bucket analogy. Right here, they even show a damn water bucket. But it doesn't tell you if it's talking about the sensor or the photo sites, but of course it's talking about the photo sites. But people don't know that because error of omission on Cambridge and Colors website. Error of omission. So I think that's where other YouTubers and other people are uh, coming up with this bucket crap and applying it to a damn sensor instead of a damn photo sites. Stupid. Now there is a new breed of sensor. Look at this, the Canon 5Ds, 51 megapixels. By the way, if you scaled up an Icon D7100 to this size of the same pixel pitch, it would be a 56 megapixel sensor. The Nikon 5D has a pixel pitch of 4.14 micrometers, which is really damn close to uh, type pixel pitches of DX. This is a 51 megapixel camera. What does that mean? That means that the Nikon 5, I mean the Canon 5D is a full frame size sensor with DX pixel pitch. You get this? SNR firmware has improved so well over the past uh, years that Instead of making this or this, we're just making this, which has this pixel pitch. That is how good the AD converters and the SNR firmware and the processors have gotten post-processor. I mean sensor, post-sensor. Because the important stuff that exists inside your camera, when Canon backwards engineers Nikon's cameras and, uh, and uh, uh, Nikon backwards engineers Canon's cameras when they come out, they don't give a damn about the sensor. They know exactly what sort of sensors, and they don't give a damn about this thing. Don't give a damn what they do backwards engineer is the SNR firmware, the AD converters, the processor, the buffering technology, Nikon nor Canon or Sony or Fuji give a damn about this and someone else's camera. They don't give a damn because it has nothing to do with this and has everything to do with the crap that exists after this. But people don't talk about that. Who talks about firmware and the firmware code? Well, that's the important crap in the signal processing because it has a lot to do with noise. Same thing right here with the Canon 5D. See, the, the firmware has gotten so good that all cameras, the full frame ones, are going to be going to this, which is a full frame size sensor with DX pixel pitch. 4.14 micrometers. Undeniable, irrefutable. Balls out, flat out. However, this does create an issue with the fact that uh, everything is still T over E. Uh, time given exposure. Exposure over given period of time. Uh, excuse me, yeah, time and exposure. Uh, therefore, we have a micro contrast issues with DX pixel pitches. Now, you got a DX pixel pitch on a DX sensor or the DX pixel pitch on the new breed of sensors. You still have issues with the low gain intertonal transmission. Even if you have the perfect lens, the perfect best damn Zeiss lens on the Canon, you've got an issue with the fact that the photo sites are smaller. So that creates an issue. That means that the current new breed of cameras are going to have micro contrast issues and color saturation issues. Now they're going to, they already are awesome in noise as the Canon 5D proves, which is where Nikon will be going with their Nikon D850 or D900 or whatever the hell they call it. But it still have an issue with the time and exposure. Because it's exposure and time. God, I hate iPads. They're so flicky. Um, so I'm glad I could correct that for you. I hope you understand this. You see the pixel pitch on a crop sensor? 
I mean on a uh, on this is actually one from my this is a 20 megapixel sensor from an icon point and shoot which you know bit the dust on me because I used the hell out of it 20 me, 20 point something megapixel sensor doesn't have good gain doesn't have good highest the pixel pitch on it is 1.7 micrometers damn